So I think the last episode, I did kind of a build up to wave 39 being like this super boss wave, which is really hard. The Mechanic faction is arguably the hardest faction in my mod pack, but they were still no match for Laser Eyes. She just absolutely melted them. And I feel like if we were to keep going with that series, I would just keep using Laser Eyes to just melt these dudes. And the ability does like a thousand damage. So even though these guys had their strength increased from compressed raid, it was still one shotting them. So effectively, I feel like we kind of just won the game at that point. We're going to bump up the difficulty to daily raids, which is slightly harder than the default settings and we're gonna get a play with no tech and we're at war with every faction to beat the daily raids we're gonna get a little help from this mycotic jungle tile on a rift landform and cave special feature and we're gonna make the map a bit smaller 150 by 150 we will be randoming our fluid ideology on this doesn't really matter hedonism isn't actually that good it's kind of funny but supremacist and then we got something else i think let's go done supremacist artist is kind of weird we're like these slave masters that like art and basically with this we want high quality art once our expert expectations get higher and we get a lot of wealth but we create art quicker and art is more desired we need a lot of art so once our expectations get really high we're going to need a really good artist or people are going to be upset basically and electric work table speed is minus 50 percent mechanoid factory speed is minus 25 which doesn't matter because we have no tech we also can execute for development points maybe i'm not using rim threaded as for what else is going on we got a melee specialist and shooting specialist which isn't really going to matter too much i think with what i have in mind at least we're going to remove the required clothing from these rolls and the only other thing i'm do here is make it so we can do these rituals at any time they do have like a 20 day cooldown so it's not like we can just spam them and this ritual actually really sucks it's like a really high chance for it to be like a negative 18 moodlet it's uh not good i think but yeah as for our 10 random starting colonists i'm gonna be able to change one thing about them whether it be like a health condition or a trait and I have a specific trait in mind. I don't think any of these guys are going to have it. Yeah, none of these guys have any god traits, nor are they casters. So we're going to have to just work off of that. I basically want to make a necromancer class, which does get bonuses to research later on. So I want a researcher. Like this person is actually really good at research. Fast learner increases global learning rate and they're scientific, which increase their research speed. This would be a perfect starter, I think. Absent-minded though, it's kind of annoying, I think. They're the only other person that really has a burning passion for research. This person has compulsion for it and so yeah i think we're just gonna have to go with the absent-minded researcher okay so first off we're gonna see what his random ability they started with was he started with no abilities which is actually really bad i think it's gonna be hard to level him up he's gonna have to level up really slowly by having his mana pool cap out he gets a little bit of xp over time i wonder if i reload if he'll get an ability sometimes it will bug out and all right i reloaded and no ability so yeah that kind of sucks he does have some decent skills though like he can plant he can mine build so we'll be okay like like we'll survive so here's what the map biome looks like there's two giant mushrooms that we kind of want to maze around there should be three somewhere and i'm trying to find the third one but i'm not getting so lucky this is actually not covered by the way this is not overhead mountain there was a wall here that i opened up and then there was this kind of secret room back here speaking of secret rooms this over here is not conjoined with this so there's gonna be something back here i want to find that third mushroom because it's gonna really dictate where we build our base and okay there's not really anything over that way What's up here though? Because this is not joined as well. Oh, there's just a cave lace. Something we can chop for wood. Six hours till the next raid. Green's going to go on a bit of a stealth mission to try to get past this insect hive. And they are all sleeping right now because it's pretty late at night. It's 10 p.m. And there's a bed down here, an ancient bed. It's not the greatest of beds, but it's going to be better than sleeping on the ground. And it looks like we're going to be able to make it past the insects. If this was daytime, I think they'd aggro on us, maybe. They are technically dormant, though, and they behave kind of weirdly. You'll see once raiders get here. And yeah, like you can see that the raiders are attacking their hive. And okay, this one's reacting, but these, you can see they're not reacting at all. Let's see this caster. He has regeneration. He's a berserker class. That's kind of unlucky, I would say. These are exceptionally good at melee. He does only have four melee though, but yeah, he's uh, regenerating his injuries. I really hope he doesn't take out like all the insects because he's a uh, OP class. If Turtle goes down, maybe he'll run. Oh, and Keeper got enough XP to gain an ability, but he needs two level ups to be able to get Raise Undead is the one we're going for. And Porcupine got knocked out. How? Oh, he was unsteady based on his ability, I guess, for a second, but he's back up. I really hope he runs when Turtle gets knocked out because I want a couple of days of free raids. And he's not going to run. Okay, we're getting the reward here, which is going to actually drop into the mountain, I think, because I forgot to put a drop zone. So this doesn't really matter. Take the leather, I think would be better. The prosthetics are really bad when they're low level. The leather is going to drop right into the mountain. No, it's not actually. The leather is good because we can make bedrolls out of it. 300 thrumbo fur that is insanely good we can make clothing out of it too i don't know if we have any crafting skill he's taking out pretty much one insect hive by himself though which is kind of crazy gonna bleed out in three hours 
would be interesting if we could capture him. The Berserker class might be pretty good. I mean, it's looking beastly. He's at 100 hate, so he gets less movement speed, but more armor, more melee damage. When he goes down, hmm, he's got three hours left, though. Is there any way we could possibly save him? We have to get down there and carry him out of there, but these insects are dormant still, I think. Well, no, this Mega Spider actually has awoke 0.1 days ago. But, like, this one's dormant. These guys are dormant. Two hours left. Oh, crap. Green's going through the mist. He's getting toxic buildup. Well, that doesn't help our situation. Green does have nine medical. I wonder if it's worth to try to save this guy. The Mega Spider's almost certainly going to charge him, I think. I guess. Maybe not. Carry him. Get him out of there. Holy hell. This could be an insane rescue mission. Arrest. First aid. One hour left. First aid is really fast, but it gives crap tens. So we might get infected. But we have a good medicine skill. I'm surprised this Mega Spider is not charging us. There we go. It might be charging us right now, but it's like injured. Can't tell. Don't mind me. I'm just trying to uh, save the guy who just took out your colony. Three hours left on this guy. We're going to save him for sure. It's almost certain at this point. That is a really good first prisoner to capture. Holy cow. I think that's enough. Let's just try to carry him out of here. We have to walk through the toxic if we walk to the east. We walk through the insects or the toxic. What's potentially worse? I actually don't know here. As long as this guy doesn't aggro on us, I think we're okay. Oh no, green's getting arrowed on. Okay, maybe go this way. Oh no. Okay, he's actually bleeding. Maybe we can just get by. The mist is really bad to walk through. Oh god, that was stupid, I think. I think in hindsight we should have walked through the mist. They were being so docile before, so I wasn't thinking they'd attack us. Imagine the thrombo for bedroll does not add comfort or beauty. It's just pointless to build out a thrombo for. There's actually a mod that I just installed that allows you to make the bed. It didn't change the thrombo for bedroll stats, I don't think. But we can now make this bed. We need bedding though in order to make it. And we need to research complex furniture for that. Because we don't have any bedding, we're only getting 35% rest effectiveness. So it's a huge nerf to this bed. It it was like 85 I think. We can make a hammock that gives 47% bed rest. So that's a bit better. 20% comfort only. Wait, the bedroll was actually quite a bit. 87% rest effectiveness because the material is thermo fur. So let's just make that. We made a normal one. It's 95% rest effectiveness. So yeah, this ancient bed doesn't make sense that it would be nice to sleep on, you know? It doesn't really make sense that we can't like put the bedroll on the bed though, if you think about it, or like just put some furs on the bed. I don't know if I like the idea that you have to research complex furniture to be able to toss some furs in your bed, but yeah, the guy put a lot of thought in this mod. Different materials affect comfort more. Thermo fur is actually not the best. I would think it'd be like one of the top ones, like maybe even the top personally, but he's thinking that muffalo wool and alpaca wool is more soft, I guess. That being said, I wonder what a regular sleeping spot is in terms of rest effectiveness. 30%. Holy hell. Imagine doing this run again, but not getting leathers. Leathers would be like a huge priority in future runs, I guess. The next raid is going to die to insect colony number two. There's two insect colonies on our map. And we're getting a really good reward here with the resource drop. 250 wood. Wood's really hard to come by. The food would be really good too, actually. But I think we'll take the resource drop because, yeah, wood's really scarce in this biome. Green finally got level two, which actually did not take as long as I thought it was going to. And we can now get raise undead, which is the main ability that's going to be making us really imbalanced. It doesn't really matter what the stats are of the raider that we raise. I think they're random once we do raise them. And I hope we don't raise this insect. We can raise two dead bodies and crap. Come inside. Wait, you can, I can actually control them. I forgot. And the insects can come inside as well. And yeah, this dude really sucks. Like his stats are mega bad. This so wave another three is another melee raid, which is good. Okay, that person actually was good at melee. This dude has 15 and they're a swordsman, which increased their melee dodge and hits. So they're exceptionally good in this battle. This person had seven melee and they had quick hands as well, which increased their melee hit, but they did not survive. He will get taken down with this one though. These guys are actually not messing around. 
And as for our reward, we got a good reward already. That's like 1% chance, but pawn join 100% will take that. There's only a 2% chance for a good reward. It was actually worse on the last wave, I think. It might've been 1%. This person's also good at research. They are vengeful though, which is really bad. Negative 20 moodly if they don't like someone. Wise, increase their research speed though. Good Lord, we have so many people that are good at research. Lowers their mental break as well. And they're an optimist for plus six mood. So the negative 20 for vengeful actually might be countered out. And okay, so I raised this undead to help us just haul because we were at full mana anyways and that was enough to be able to get consumed corpse here's her stats by the way they're actually much better like she can mine cook plants build craft she has no chance to botch as well which is huge because green does have a small chance to botch so we'll have her start building some stuff for us as for the first tech we're going to research we can try out this one bronze working which allows us to mix steel with stone chunks to create slightly weaker metal but we get more out of it let's try that and let's see how it plays out the next raid's four dudes and those are explosives i think by the way it seems like these guys kind of i can't really watch this because i need a micro holy hell they didn't even do that much damage actually because this insect's still alive Sticky bomb. They look three damage. I'd rather not have this dude, Junko, get taken out at all. They do heal their injuries pretty fast. Like, they instantly banish them. She might be dead here, actually. She can get knocked out pretty easily. Yeah, just come up this way. We have the Spilipede that I raised a while ago as well. We can re-raise Junko, but I think she'll have different stats, which kind of sucks. Yeah, she's down. These guys should go for our Spilipede up here. and I'm going to try to drag them into the mist. I'm gonna set an area up here and then I'm gonna have the Spielipede go to that area. Apparently these things cannot get toxic or never mind they can. It's not wanting to go to the well, that's not working out. We can come back down here and raise the undead. We don't have much mana, but we'll have enough. I was not really expecting to have to fight this. This is not good, I think. These guys aren't casters, so we're okay. Maybe. Grab that weapon and then she actually has different stats or the same, maybe? Um, I'm not sure how we want to do this. Like, just melee, I guess? I don't know. She's got a good amount of melee, 13. The weapon she has really sucks, though. Oh, nice. She killed that dude. How do we want to do this? Oh, this guy's Odyssean, by the way. Increased luring ray and armor. Oh, nice. We knocked him, and they're running. These are all pretty bad rewards, I would say. Maybe the poor weapons drop though, because it could be any poor weapon. And this guy is good. It's female. Should arrest her. We got a Kronos, which is a special weapon from the Oddities weapon module. 20% global work speed. We'll take it for that reason. The damage looked pretty good, actually. Okay, so wave five's here, and I'm still like not sure the logistics of the best way to go about these raids. We're attacking from not the best side, I would say. And we have an undead that we've raised who is going to try to bait these guys to fight in the mist. And he is being unsuccessful. So two of them are breachers, and I'm not sure... Are they going to actually just try to breach in here? Oh, yeah, they are. Okay, that's not good. This undead is actually messing with their gambler. Killed their gambler, which is really good. The guy actually has a heal. Crap, they're actually breaching in hard. So this weapon, by the way, it has a cool effect, apparently. And, okay, stuns. Holy hell, that thing's actually sick. Pawn join or random good reward? I think pawn join, for sure. Always gotta go to the pawn join almost. The wood's good too, but we have plenty of wood. Oh, and this guy went berserk because we used that weapon. So, crap, don't shoot this guy. Okay. But yeah, that weapon I think is going to be insane on Undead because we can just send them in by themselves and not have anyone near. You can really give it to any beastly fighter because the user does not get affected by it. Okay, this is not good. We're getting raided by arguably the most... Im oh, crap. Ram's not in a good spot. He not get hit at least. I was not paying attention for a moment because a warg actually kind of threw off my whole feng shui. It stepped on a trap just for no reason. Just There's nothing in here, but it just wanted to mess us up. And actually, this is not going to be that bad of a raid. That was going to be way worse. We don't care about this person. 
They suck. We got a medicine drop. Let's take that. Okay, I was way more worried about that raid because the mechanics are very imbalanced. I thought I might take all these steel traps plus the undead, but no. We raise this person, but this race really sucks. They only have 28 HP on their torso and their stats aren't good. So I think we're just going to consume them. And then I'll try to raise these mechanics as well. So we researched bronze working and I still don't know how to make that. While we're looking into that, we're going to research magicite refining, which unlocks some pretty major magic techs, arcane crafting, scribing, and enchanting. And these are all important for later. And we actually can raise these mechanics as undead, which is kind of crazy. It might be a little bit imbalanced. This dude has really good stats. He can build, mine, plant, craft. And same with this dude. They're both pretty equally good. I'm guessing it's going to really take a toll on his mana regen. Yeah, huge mana regen penalties though. Green's now losing mana. He was at 9 just now. And after like, I don't know, an hour, he's down to 6. So we're not going to be able to maintain both these mechanics unless we just eat a lot of corpses. But, uh, yeah. Get in here. No. For some reason, they're not on auto attack or... Oh, no, they are. Would have Junko come in here and help out, but I think they'll turn these undead against us. Okay, these guys are fleeing, or they think they're fleeing. A thousand textiles, potentially. I don't think we care about the laser weapons, because they need ammo. If I wasn't using Yeo's combat, then the laser weapons might be the way to go. But, yeah, let's take a textile. A random one. This guy, by the way, is he good? No. I don't think so. Let's arrest them and then execute and let's see what happens. Do we get development points for executing? We do not. It's some maw that's causing that. I'm not sure which one. But yeah, we'll just consume all these corpses and then past that, we're gonna probably have to dismiss one of these mechanics, but we'll keep them around just so we can raise them if need be. For the time being, they're gonna be doing mining and building for us mainly and then planting too. As far as the 1000 textile, it's 1000 Falmer leather, which is like human leather kind of, so that's pretty lame. 60% softness. Thrombo fur, on the other hand, is only 50%. What the heck? We should not have made all of our bedrolls out of thrombo fur. Oopsie daisy. We didn't have any other materials for it though, so there was really no other option. So wave 8 is on its way, and we researched magic hat refining, was it? We can now research smithing. Tatami floor is kind of cool. You get like a plus 3 moodlet for walking over a tatami floor that's made out of hay. But I think smithing is like actually really important, so we're gonna go for that. Yeah, clean up the base design a little bit. There's only one way in, and we're gonna have Junko use her... Uh, uh, what should we call it? And is it gonna make all these guys go berserk? Is the question. I don't actually want to have her out here. And actually, we're gonna bring her back inside. Uh, okay, it didn't actually make them go crazy or anything. I don't know what's up with that. That's a lie, though. And they say it makes them go berserk. It made that one person go berserk, though. Maybe these guys are some you do it or something. I don't know. Um, Chronos cooldown for one hour. Okay, so we can have these guys actually come back in and help. I wanted to hold a line here, but I also wasn't sure how that ability would work, so that was kind of a test. And yeah, we actually want to kill these people, not let them run. So we gotta anticipate where they're gonna flee to. We actually knocked out two of them. Is Manu any good? They are a ninja. I don't know if it's just class though. Three poor rewards, it's kind of lame. Let's take the poor weapons though. Could be some good weapons. We got a really good weapon earlier. And how about this guy? Good at shooting, athletic is also pretty good. Increased global work speed, lowers aiming time. Five hours left, we destroyed their arm though. Oh, this person actually is gonna bleed out. Or they're gonna explode, we gotta arrest them. It's gonna maybe, oh. Nice, we got him. We already have two prisoners, so maybe we just kill this person and give someone a moodlet buff. With our ID Legion, we get a 10 moodlet buff for executing. And Medin's not usually in the best mood because rivals are alive. He is not like the undead. Be able to execute. And that guy died? That was because their toxic buildup being at 64% combined with the blood loss at 45 because we had still like four hours left to banish them up. But that's all right. I mean, they were a ninja class, but they had no melee skill, so they weren't even that good of a ninja. Do also note that when you raise people, they lose their traits, so we can't like raise the ninja. They become psychopath and undead always. Oh yeah, we got a poor weapons drop. A Persona Goss Magnum. This is a really cool weapon. It has neural cooling, which helps psy casting, I guess. Goss weapons can pierce through the target. This does all see space ammo though, so we're pretty far off being able to use that. As for the charge lance rifle, it does require spacer ammo, so that's gonna be hard to come by, but calm thoughts increases the mood of whoever's bonded to, and they don't feel pain. Those are really good traits. It is poor quality though, unfortunately, so even though it's persona, it's not that accurate. The next wave is here, and they are attacking immediately. This guy is very fast. We use the stun, which maybe that was a little bit of a mistake, but there's only four of these dudes. It's a really easy faction. 
So these guys get a little bit closer or okay, never mind. Prosthetics drop is pretty crap IMO. Let's take the food drop. It's usually like five of the same prosthetic, I think, which is kind of useless. So we tame the immortal alpaca. It turns out the raccoon is also immortal. And we got one of these stupid breacher raids we gotta deal with now. We're gonna have the alpaca just go in and tank. And then we're actually just gonna open this door. Maybe. I don't know actually. I actually don't know how to handle this, to be honest. This might be like really bad. We got the stun off. Like, I don't know. The breach of rage is just so stupid. It's like imagine playing a tower defense and then you got one of those waves that kills your towers. Like those are the worst or like air levels. Those are also the worst, but this is actually the like, tower killing level basically. We need to get green out here and get ready to re-raise anyone that dies basically. Okay, so we got two people dead already. We're raising dead. This is potentially it. Like, everyone's dead. Holy hell, green guy hit. Uh, God, he's down. But he raised the undead. Just in time. Holy freaking hell. This is like limit testing to the max. The breach of raid, man. Like, who thought that was a good idea? Well, if you're playing with one raid in 40 days, it's a good idea. It's fine. But, uh... Oh my god. They're gonna steal what they can and leave. They're gonna steal the Persona weapon, whatever. It's Breach Rate Imbalance. We need to get this guy inside as well. We need. They're still coming. Uh, rescue, carry. Well, yeah, they can take this weapon actually too. It's increasing our wealth by too much. It's actually making the game harder. Yeah, you can have it. It's fine. Take the charge weapon, sure. Clean up our map. I think once those weapons leave our map, our expectations are gonna go lower, yeah. So that actually helps us. I'm kinda down for them to steal those weapons. It was gonna be such a long time before we are gonna be able to use them. We could have bound them to people, but no one's good at, wow, we got another pawn join. I kinda wanna take the wood, but if the pawn join is good, then we have to just go for it for the chance that it's good. And they are wise they can research they're good at planting they are a wimp which actually increase their movement speed they can't fight with that lord pain shock but we don't need them to fight they can do so much around base so i'm playing with the werewolf mod and around day 12 you get this werewolf events where there's around four waves of werewolves that spawn and it's based on your wealth so it's actually kind of good they jacked those weapons i did just realize they jacked our super cool stun weapon that increased global work speed and it's taking all of my discipline i guess if you will to not save scum and try to figure out a better way to beat those breach raiders but i really can't think of a better way we have a couple guns so we could have actually used those guns to our advantage oh freaking hell r.i.p our alpaca its neck was torn off and it is no longer immortal that's it for the alpaca and we got the avatar of here scene walking through the toxic and if this thing does die which nice it went down it will drop a gift for us it's speed totem which increases speed by 10 percent i'm not sure who we'd want to give that to probably no one yet oh and this dude went down. Green's in a really bad mood, so I would like to get him out of here to res this dude. Well, his mood's actually okay now. It's weird. Like, he was in extreme break almost. If we don't win this, they'll start beating on our doors and stuff. Like, they do not mess around. And they give people werewolf disease. Not undead, but if they attack people, they will give them a werewolf disease. And then if you don't have any way to cure it, which we do not, they get turned into werewolves. But yeah, wave two was successful, I guess you could say. We could also raise the werewolves and have them help us, I think. I wonder if they can give people werewolf disease. Be kind of funny. And already it's a oil raid, and they all get sniper rifles, but with Yeo's combat, they don't have ammo. But these guys are just sitting in the toxic. This is perfect for us, and now they're running. Random good reward. Let's just take that. I'm feeling lucky. A skill boost that is amazing. I think it's like a plus two skill boost because yeah, 14 medical, I'm pretty sure medin was 12. That is definitely way good. So we survived the werewolf invasion and fast forward to this raid. We have a new ability, Fog of Torment, which will heal allied undead and damage enemies. I'm not sure the best place for this. Probably like there maybe. I'm not sure how long it lasts also. So maybe I should have waited till they actually started taking some damage. Get green back inside. It cannot be losing you. And your job here is done. Well, Junko actually got injured, but then the injury healed pretty fast, I think. Chilling like two per every like few seconds. The 
uh, Mechanid got injured. I don't know if I ever talked about the fact that they bandage their injuries and like undead don't bleed. As for reward, resource drop could be really good actually. I think we'll take that over the armor. Cause we can get armor from raiders and undead don't mind wearing tainted stuff. But yeah, so that was a really good reward. We got a manhunty pack of three Timber Wolves right after that. And we probably won't use Consume Corpse on them. I haven't talked yet about this ability, but it will replenish green's mana based on if the corpse is rotting or not. But if you do raise the body, even if it's rotting, it will give you more mana. And I think the best play might be to put points into Powered Creation so we can raise more undead. We can raise five at a time and then we can consume all of them. And I think we'll get more mana back than the cost of raise undead, which will allow us to level up really fast. So I'm going to start putting points into that next, I think. Especially once we start getting raided by more things, it's going to be much better. And yeah, I did just edit everything up to this point and I kind of skipped over a lot of stuff. Like if we put three points into Greedy Consumption to increase the mana restored by Consumed Corpse by 20%, I guess. And then this only costed one point, I think, to get Fog of Torment so we can heal undead, which is the ability I just showed off. And then I put two points in a Cheating Death, which lowers the mana cost to raise undead and reduce the cost to maintain them. Right now we gotta prepare for arguably the most imbalanced race my mod pack. I'm not sure which is more imbalanced, this one of the mechanists. On the bright side though, we can raise these things to fight for us if we do survive this. So we have 13s here and we got Muscle Parasites on three pretty important people. Since Gok Heavy is a wimp and they've lowered Pain Shock Threshold, they actually went down. And okay, we actually gotta focus on this raid. So this is gonna cost a lot of our steel. Trying to, uh, yeah, it's too imbalanced, I think. I don't think we uh, win this, maybe? I don't know. The Muscle Parasites thing is like really uh, disturbing as well. I don't know why there's random diseases like that when you're playing with Winston Waves. We've dropped so many traps, like how? This guy's Ares Wrath. We need to start raising them. We need to raise these guys as undead to fight for us, basically. 